Um, another area, and, and it, I started to get into this with vegetarianism and veganism, but this notion of eating clean, to what extent is this notion of cleanliness actually eating healthy? Um, and to what extent might it simply be an aversion to uh, toxins or, or, or a, a an over, a hypersensitive disgust reflex that, that makes people avoid things that they shouldn't actually avoid. So we've talked about vegetarianism and veganism. Um, perceived hypersensitivity to toxins. Um, in this community and other community, um, there are certain foods where um, it's as if you know, the slightest uh, contact with any pesticide makes them immediately this terrible, terrible, unhealthy food and I can have nothing on it. Well, maybe that's true, but maybe it's not. You know, maybe you know, maybe the the pesticide is is biologically inactive, or you know, goes out in your feces or something like that, or doesn't have an effect in small doses. Um, there's uh, you know the notion of cleanses, particularly colon cleanses. Uh, it's it, people. It, it's often women. Um, who get disgusted with their own feces and the idea that there's something rotting in their colon. So again, these are all these triggers of disgust. It's bodily fluids, r rot and decomposition, um, and the notion of impurity and that you have to go through this process to cleanse yourself. Now, it's perfectly normal for there to be bacteria in your colon that digest foods and, and purifying, you know, we're starting to realize that fecal transplants can be good for you, right? Like sticking other people's feces into your body can actually have a beneficial effect. So our intuitive understanding of infection or contamination may be leading people astray to be getting th these sort of cleanses done on their colon that, that might not be supported by, by the science. Um, some types of fasts and cleanses um, in general, juice fasts, master cleanses, things like that, they're really driven by this notion of purification. And it, uh, you know, drinking lemon juice and cayenne pepper and maple syrup, it, there's not a lot of evidence that something like that is actually an effective way to purify your body, whatever that means. Um, I'm not saying that there aren't methods of detoxifying your body of, say, heavy metals or something like that, but our intuitive notions of contamination are probably not terribly accurate. Contamination-focused OCD, a lot of obsessive compulsive behavior is around hygiene, hand washing, uh, hygiene rituals, bathing, uh, not wanting to touch, you know, germaphobes, not wanting to touch, you know, go on subways or get contaminated and things like that. And in these cases, it may be a hypersensitive disgust reflex that, that is actually ultimately damaging to people. It's too sensitive. Kind of like a lot of autoimmune conditions where the immune system is, is hypersensitive and attack parts of the body and destroys them, causes inflammation. People are very familiar uh, with, with conditions like that here. Um, even homeopathy may be partially, uh, partially motivated by this, this intuitive notion of germs or contamination, that there are these tiny, you know, extremely dilute substances that can have an enormous effect, whether, you know, negative or, or positive, or, or perceived contamination from vaccines. A lot of the opposition to vaccines is around this intuitive notion of, oh, there's, some, there's something in this vaccine that is contaminating my body. Now, that may be the case, but it also may not be the case. So if some of these conditions lead to self-harm, and they might not, but in the cases where they do, we might think of them as immunological disorders because our disgust reflex is part of our immune system and if it goes haywire, then it may manifest in, in certain, certain sort of maladaptive behaviors.